Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Dr. Tom LeHue. We're going to be talking about Enneagram types 8, 9, and 1 and how they show up at work and how you can show up in your superpowers and your strengths and uh, be the best you you can be. And before we get started, just a reminder in the description below is a link to my website, TomLeHue.com, where you can book Enneagram coaching appointments for yourself or as a couple. Also on my website is information about the classes that I offer, the certificate classes. Uh, some of those are live on Zoom. And and some of those are on demand and I'm always adding to my on-demand library um, and there's classes all kinds of stuff about the Enneagram and relationships and spirituality Enneagram and Christian life coaching all kinds of stuff and I would love for you to to be in one of those classes also um, if you're interested in having me come speak to your team or do some Enneagram training for your staff please reach out to me I would love to meet your people and bring them into this world so that they can be the best versions of themselves work together and be productive and also thanks to my patrons I really appreciate your support and also I've got a couple of grandkids here today uh, in the background um, so if you hear some screaming um, it's just grandkids okay so I'm gonna get this video done and then get back to playing with the kids all right so I'm reading a new book right now that is called the Enneagram at work by Jim McPartland it's a brand new book and uh, fantastic really good uh, this guy is a hotel executive Executive. He's worked with uh, companies like Disney, and he's he's been in some of the best hotels, working in some of the best hotels in San Francisco, L.A., um, and uh, Orlando, and New York. And uh, he is himself a Type Six. And he wrote a book on the Enneagram and basically like getting the most out of work and leadership and what an interesting topic, what a good topic. And you know, this really is helpful stuff when you sit down with your team or your staff and figure out everybody's type. And you know, it doesn't, it doesn't restrict you in that this is the only way you can show up to work, but it does kind of show how you tend to show up at whatever job you're doing. And so, so I want to do a three part series, breaking this information down. And I want to start with the anger types or the doing types, eight, nine, and one. I just wanna I just wanna read what he says and then talk about it. Okay, so let's start with type eight. And what he says, of course, he calls the eight the boss, which is a which is a, a good term for an eight, the challenger, the maverick, um, the boss. And he calls him the boss and he says, This type is a natural born leader. Their take charge personalities allow them to size up situations, get to the point, and move in decisive action. They respond well to candid feedback and feel comfortable giving the same. Cultivate your type eight strengths by, and then what he does is he lists four things, okay? So we're gonna go through each of these four things. Then we'll move on to nine, and then we'll move finally into type one. And so one of the things he says about eights is he says eights tend to be assertive. Um, assertive uh, and so he says if you if you and I think I think one of the things that we should we should say is this isn't just for eights think of all the types that are connected to eight so a nine could hear this information and go yeah I definitely need to lean more into that eight I need to be more assertive the words he gives are assertive magnetic protective and autonomous so think about a, a, a nine leaning into that eight. Think about sevens and their need to lean into that eight and twos. You know, sometimes before they end up here, uh, if they could willingly um, become more assertive and um, more direct and straightforward. Um, think about fives, they integrate to eight. And so fives could hear this list and go, yeah, at my best, I kind of look like this. So let's talk about that eight. What does eight bring to the party? What does eight share with everybody else? And what are eights like in the corporate world at their best? Well, <clears throat> notice he says they make they make decisive leaders. They tend to make uh, you know CEOs and take charge personalities. And a lot of times, I think it's because eights are just willing to make a decision. They don't like sitting there in that indecision. Well, what do you think we should do? Maybe we should have a committee meeting. I like committee meetings. I like hearing everybody's opinion. But I realize as an eight that that could get frustrating. Like let's just make a decision. Let's take action. Let's quit talking about it. And so that's going to make them look like a leader because they're willing to step out there and trust themselves and trust their gut. So let's see what he says. He says assertive, be confident and direct and make your needs known. Uh, think about how hard that is for a type two to make their needs known or how hard that is for a type nine to make their needs known. So assertive, number one, number two, uh, magnetic. 
Show calm self-confidence and authenticity which draws people to you. I mean, who doesn't want to be around somebody that's confident? There's somebody that projects that sense of like, you know, I know who I am, I know what I want, I know what needs to be done. And I think as eights, you want to keep a little bit of a, you know, a 5% uh, uh, openness to you that says, well, maybe I'm not, maybe I don't really know as much as I, uh, I, I, I seem to know. And, you know, eights have a line to five under stress where they, they have to stop and really think about their decisions and think about their actions. And a lot of times that doesn't happen until they realize that their actions don't work or their their strategy didn't work and then they'll stop and reflect and think about it. But eights tend to be magnetic people, big people who are moving places and aren't afraid to just be themselves and say things out loud. And, and eights, you know, often tell me that they don't really think uh, about what they do. They just do what they do. They just go out into the world and they just do what they do and they don't spend a lot of time navel gazing or thinking about you know how their actions are going to impact. Now other eights like social eights often overthink how their actions are going to impact the group and they so desperately don't want to be lonely and want to be a part of that group that sometimes they really limit their eightness and if you if you if you realize like consciously like you're always like restraining yourself and not saying what you want to say and not you know taking the the bold action use very likely you may be the counter eight the social eight so assertive magnetic protective what a great word. And this is what he says about protective. In an almost super huge, superhero format, they believe in truth, justice, and protecting those around you, family, friends, and coworkers. And I think oftentimes when I talk to eights, like love equals protection. If you love someone, then you're very protective of that person. It always is funny watching my daughter, who's an eight wing seven, you know, um, and how she and how she guards and protects her son. Um, and I don't mean it's funny. I just mean it's so interesting because an eight who's bold and willing to go out there and not afraid of anything, yet very protective of of someone that they love, someone who actually is really vulnerable. And you'll see that eight like guardian and protector, something eights and sixes I think share in common, that confronter, protector. In fact, eights, twos, and sixes are all in a group together of the protectors. Okay, so if, you, if you're if you a six and you're like, well, that's what I'm like, or a two, that's what I'm like, yes. Eights, twos, and six, the protectors. Okay, so protective energy. And then autonomous. Autonomous. He says, enjoy the freedom of your own thoughts and expressions and avoid being dependent on anyone but yourself. There's probably a group of autonomous people uh, in the Enneagram. It would be eight, five, and I'm not sure what the other one is. Um, I don't know, but maybe ones. I have to think about that. But um, uh, eights, uh, uh, enjoy the freedom of your own thoughts. Like, I'm just doing what I want to do, and, and I'm just doing what I want. And if you want to go with me, you can, but I'm not going to sit around here and wait to get permission from mommy before I can make a cheese sandwich. I'm just going to do what I do and then uh, ask for forgiveness later or maybe not ask for forgiveness. Okay, so really helpful stuff. And I think it just kind of says is an eight, like go out and be an eight. Go be a healthy eight. Don't don't limit yourself so much trying to lean into that nine or seven or look like a two or get into that five thoughtful space. Just remember who you are. Remember you are an eight and then own that and be that. Be a healthy version of it. And in the leadership or corporate world, that means you tend to be assertive, magnetic, protective, and autonomous. Four great words. Okay, let's shift to the nine. The nine he calls the adaptive peacemaker. And I think peacemaker is a good term. Adaptive is a good term. And maybe, you know, there's a dark side to that sometimes of being too adaptive or too willing to adapt yourself to others, minimizing yourself at times. But let's stay positive here. He, he says affable, patient, supportive. Nines are naturally diplomatic. Good word, I think that word makes a lot of sense. Diplomatic, um, careful in how they come across, careful in how they share information, sensitive to people's feelings and sensitive to causing disturbance or unrest in the force. Okay, so they are skilled in their ability to see both sides of an argument. Very good and very helpful. Um, don't you wish that all of us were like this, to be able to see both sides, which sometimes leaves the nine not knowing what their own side is. You know, like what, what side, what, 
what side does the referee root for? One of the terms for the nine is the referee, the advisor, the personal assistant. When you're the referee, it's hard for you to really root for one side over the other. And I think as nines, you kind of want to tell people when they push on you, what? You have to have an opinion. You have to have a side that you take. I think as nines, probably the best thing you can say is, well, the side I take is I don't see things that way. I don't take sides. I see the good and bad or the positive and negative on both sides. And that's my side is to see things, you know, from a more neutral, even handed uh, perspective, diplomatic. OK, so he says um, the ability to see both sides um, and you want this when you're having a conflict at work. You probably want nines and fives to be in the middle of that conflict because fives have a way of just observing the information, cutting out all the, the, the emotional stuff, and then just kind of getting to the bottom line. What we have here is we have a disagreement between Bob and Mary. Bob thinks we should go left. Mary thinks we should go right. And then you have nines trying to heal and keep everybody together, like mortar between bricks, trying to keep everybody on the same team both very helpful in in times of times of crisis so the ability to see both sides of an argument able to build consensus you know you nines you beat yourselves up because you look at threes and eights and you're like oh, i wish i was motivated and driven like them you are motivated you're 100 percent motivated to do these things to build consensus to build harmony think of the band leader you know the band leader that's out there waving the batons they might beat themselves up and say well what instrument do i play i am not a i'm not a, you know important like the the french horn player i'm not important like the bass player but look the band leader with their back to the crowd, with their back to the audience, they almost become invisible. They keep the team working together. And nines often end up, you know, in this kind of a role of keeping the team working together. Okay, so do that, do that. We need that. Every team needs that, that person that just makes sure that we're all okay and working together. Um, let's see, both sides of an argument, able to build consensus with dis, disparate, disparate. I went to college, disparate groups. Okay, cultivate your type nine strengths by being, and this is what he says. Okay, here's the four things. Fair-minded, good. Uh, easygoing, good. Uh, genuine, fantastic, and thoughtful. So here's the four things. Fair-minded, easygoing, genuine, and thoughtful. So let's come back to fair-minded. He says, fair-minded, take in multiple perspectives and look for common ground. Well, that's fantastic. Um, don't you wish that ones and eights could lean into that more? Don't you wish that ones and eights could be more fair-minded, more uh, taking in other people's perspectives, valuing them and seeing the good and the importance in them, and then helping people find common ground? What a wonderful thing to bring to a, a team. What a wonderful thing to bring to your organization. Easy going. They move at an easy pace. That's a nice way of saying it, isn't it? Move at an easy pace. Well, you know, like you had that type eight that was uh, assertive and moving forward. Now you have the nine who's like moving at an easy pace. Uh, anchoring the team with thoughtful questions and perspectives. And sometimes, you know, I think nines are good at playing the devil's advocate. Like, well, how is this going to impact this group? And how is this team going to feel about this decision? And how will this impact our clients? And I think that can be very helpful um, to, to bring all of us back to, you know, really thinking about how our actions are going to impact others. Genuine. Be modest and unassuming. Put others at ease and show up exactly as you are. Genuine. Modest and unassuming. Uh, putting others at ease. And then the last one is thoughtful. Take considerate approach, especially when listening to others' ideas. Thoughtful. Now, you know, at, at their worst, nines are kind of checked out and blank, but, uh, and, you know, maybe even go to their empty place in their minds, just kind of zoned out and narcotized. But look at that. At their best, thoughtful. Thoughtful, careful, caring. Um, what a great thing to bring to a team. So what were those again? Let's go back and look at those. Fair-minded, easygoing, uh, genuine, and thoughtful. Every, every one of us could improve by leaning into more of that. And nines, go be that. Go show that. 
uh, those those blessings and that gift to the rest of us and to the to the teams you're on. All right, so let's let's go to type two. Type two he calls the strict perfectionist. The strict perfectionist. If you're a type one, how does that sound to you? Strict perfectionist. I think it's fair. Um, you know. Um, Sometimes that perfectionist thing makes you very detailed, organized, structured, and getting things done. You know, the busy bumblebee. But I've seen sometimes with type ones, it can make them very much procrastinate. Like because I want things done properly, because I want things done appropriately, um, and I can't seem to get them done perfectly, then I'll just wait until tomorrow. So that could end up backfiring sometimes. So let's let's talk about the good. Okay. Type one strict perfectionist, he says, this type is all about honoring your commitment. Fantastic. Ones, you guys are the managers on the on the group, okay, on, on the Enneagram. Honoring your commitment and striving for excellence in everything you do. Fantastic. What team doesn't need that? What team doesn't need that voice? That person to inspire the rest of us and say, ah, you know, we're not going to cut corners here. Everybody needs to step up to the plate. Everybody needs to, to, to come in and be here on time and come with your game face on and be ready to work and be ready to give your best. I mean, every team needs this. If you're a one, please be that voice to the rest of us. Realize that all of us have that kind of voice in the background, but it's not necessarily the loudest voice in our head. And so you can be that voice in a positive way, not in an angry, frustrated, belittling, you know, moody way, but in a positive way. Just be that champion of getting things done and getting things done the right way at the right time. Your word is your bond. If you say you'll do something, the expectation is that you will follow through and you will do it and do it well. So here's what a type one, uh, according to uh, Jim McPartland, the book, The Enneagram at Work, here's what he says. Type ones, this is what you bring, okay, into the group. Conscientious, Conscientious, organized, principled, and objective. Conscientious, organized, principled, and objective. Who doesn't need that? Let's break them down. He says, conscientious, turn in assignments on time. Meticulously pre-checked for mistakes. Get stuff done and get it done on time and make sure it's done correctly. Now I'm a seven. I have a strong line to one, and I think my uh, tri type is probably seven one four. So there's a lot of oneness here. But man, I just details. It's so hard sometimes as a seven. I don't lead with a one. I lead with a seven. But man, we need that uh, that that voice that says, "Get your stuff done. Stay disciplined. Get focused." You know, what do you need to be doing right now? And why don't we put aside all the junk and let's get busy doing what needs to be done? Or ask yourself that question, what do you want to have done? Not what do you want to do, what do you want to have done? And just look at sevens line to one, fours line to one, nines wing one, and even twos. You know, because twos can get so caught up in the people that they, and caring for people that they don't get their stuff done on time or they don't get it done, you know, in a detailed manner because they're so busy taking care of people that they sometimes don't take care of the tasks. And ones, man, they care about the task. They care about people too, of course, but, but somebody's gotta be there to hold the line for the rest of us and say, look, when we don't know what to do, do the right thing. When you don't know what to do, do the right thing. Oh, maybe you didn't hear me. When you don't know what to do, then do the right thing. Figure out what the right thing is and do that. And what a great, great model to live by. Sometimes we can argue about what the right thing is. We can debate about it. You know, my right thing might not be the same as your right thing, but what a great compass, you know, to have internally. I realize, okay, we're going to keep it positive. I'm not going to pick on anybody today. So let's see, conscientious, organized, use the ability to put priority on the difficult assignments. Use the ability or your ability to put uh, priority on difficult assignments, organized. You know, so many of us, myself included as a seven, we could be so much more productive if we could just get organized. Ah, Jimmy Buffett, I think, is a type seven. And there's an album that I listened to where he's talking about, I don't know, Junior Mints or something. And he says uh, about movies charging too much for their tickets and too much for their snacks and too much for Junior Mints. And he's like, they want to sell you a 40 ounce soda and Junior Mints at $5. He's like, I just can't handle that much organization in my life. 
And I get that, you know, I want to be organized, but I sometimes struggle with organization. And ones we need you to say, come on guys, let's get organized. Let's put a priority list down here. Let's get our, let's get our notebook, let's get our pen, and let's write down one to 10, what needs to be done, prioritize these, put it up at the top, and let's get cracking on that list. Not tomorrow, nines, not someday, sevens, but now, let's get busy now and get this stuff done. Organized. Uh, principled, principled, so conscientious, organized, and principled. Principled, show integrity with process and deed, be ethical in action. Principled means there's lines we don't cross, there's things we won't do. I won't be a part of that, I won't sign my name on that. And that can be frustrating sometimes to your team when they just want results, they just want to get things done. But don't we all need more of that? Don't we all need more of that? Like, what is it that we won't do? What is it that we'll say no to? You know, you don't just know a person by the good they do, but also by the bad they won't do. Uh, you know, you, that, that defines you. That's your boundaries. When you say, not only what am I chasing, but what am I running away from? Like, I am not going to be a part of that. I will not, you know, stand for that. Or when I used to be in Kentucky, they used to say, I just don't cotton to it. I just don't cotton to that. All right, so conscientious, organized, principled, and objective. Be fair-minded, and this is objective. Be fair-minded with the ability to use discernment with people and situations. Objective, to try to stay a little bit neutral and uh, to keep uh, your eyes open to the way things actually are and to, to remain more objective. So isn't that interesting, principled, I've got boundaries, there's things I won't do, and yet at the same time trying to remain objective. Um, what a great blend, what a great, what a great person to have on every team. You know, somebody that's gonna show up and make sure that they do their best and then challenge the rest of us uh, to, to do our best and to be principled and fair-minded and organized and conscientious, great. So I hope you see through this, you know, that all of us bring something to work with us. We bring something to the team that is going to help the team move forward. And so go be that, go be the best version of yourself. And as always, be present to life. I'll see you guys next time.